Hi, my name is Lambert Lambertson. Hi, I'm Carly Rakowski. I'm Abigail Slavin. I'm Brianna Schroeder. And I'm Kelsey Jo Hegum, and our presentation is on Eric Erickson. Eric Erickson was born in Frankfurt, Germany in 1902 to a single mother. Her name was Carla Abrahamson. She was a young Jewish woman and raised Eric for the first three years of his life. Then she married Eric's pediatrician and moved to southern Germany. During Erickson's childhood, the details of his birth were kept secret and caused some issues concerning his developmental identity. He was tall, blonde, and blue-eyed, but he was also Jewish. These attributes seemed to conflict with each other and caused him to be teased during his early years. After graduating high school, he focused on becoming an artist and lived on the streets until he turned 25. Then he applied for a teaching position at an experimental school for American students in Vienna. Around the same time, he met his wife, Joan Serson. They had three children. And around the same time as that, the Nazis were coming into power. So Erickson moved his family from Vienna to Copenhagen and then eventually to Boston. Later on, he worked at Harvard Medical School, Yale, and Berkeley. In 1950, Erickson wrote Childhood and Society, which won him a Pulitzer Prize and the National Book Award. During this time, Eric also left his teaching job because they were asked to sign loyalty oaths by Senator Joseph McCarthy. Because of this, he spent 10 years working at a clinic in Massachusetts before returning to his old teaching job at Harvard. He retired in 1970 and continued his research with his wife until he passed away in 1994. By the end of this video, you should be able to differentiate the different stages of Eric Erickson's psychosocial stages of development. Vocab 1. Trust. An essential truthfulness of others as well as a fundamental sense of one's own trustworthiness. The first stage of Erickson's theory is trust versus mistrust. This stage focuses on an infant's basic needs. If these needs are met, the child will develop basic trust. If they are not met, the child will develop basic mistrust. Infants depend on their parents, primarily their mothers, for comfort and sustenance. If their parents fail to provide the basic needs for their infants, mistrust can develop, which can lead to feelings of frustration, suspicion, withdrawal, and an overall lack of confidence. Their outlook on life could be that the world is undependable, unreliable, or perhaps even dangerous. However, some mistrust is healthy so that the infant can learn the difference between safe and dangerous situations. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, so I see your new baby. Yes. How exciting. Can I hold her? Sure. Oh, awesome. So precious. Oh, yeah. She's already good. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. She'll be okay. You know what? I think she just wants you. Okay, she's tired. Okay. Oh, she's so precious. Vocab 2. Autonomy. Independence or freedom as of the will or one's actions. The second stage of Erickson's theory is autonomy versus shame and doubt. This stage focuses on children between the ages of 2 and 4. Children gain control over functions and motor abilities and begin to explore their surroundings. The parents are involved with providing a strong base of security. Because of this, parents' patience and encouragement help foster autonomy in the child. Children at this age are likely to explore the world around them, and they are constantly learning about their environment. Caution must be taken at this age while children may explore things that are dangerous to their health and safety. Children also develop their first interests. For example, a child who enjoys music may like to play with the radio. Highly restrictive parents, however, are more likely to instill a sense of doubt within the child. 
If caregivers encourage self-sufficient behavior, toddlers develop a sense of autonomy, a sense of being able to handle many problems on their own. Honey, you know the rule. If you use the bathroom, you'll get a treat afterwards. Yay! How's it going in there? I think it's happening. Good, good. Oh, oh. The third stage of Erickson's theory is initiative versus guilt. This stage focuses on children between the ages of four and five who start to feel a sense of purpose. They become creative, which adds to their ability to undertake, plan, and attack tasks. The child is learning to master the world around them and learning basic skills. Young children in this category face the challenge of initiative versus guilt. Guilt is a confusing new emotion. They may feel guilty over things that logically should not cause guilt. The development of courage and independence also begin during this stage. Activities sought out by a child may include risk-taking behaviors, such as crossing a street alone or riding a bike without a helmet. Both of these examples involve self-limits. When frustrated or not properly enforced by parents or peers, Aggressive behaviors may become an issue. With this growing independence, there are many choices of activities to be pursued. If parents and preschool teachers encourage and support children's efforts while helping them make realistic and appropriate choices, children develop independence in planning and undertaking activities. If adults discourage the pursuit of independent activities or dismiss them as silly or bothersome, Children develop guilt about these actions. Okay, so here's how you tie no, your shoe. I got oh, it. Okay. I'm doing it. Okay. Show me how you tie your shoes. Put this in here. And then put this to mm. And then you take it. Okay, do you need some help? No. Oh, okay. I got it. See, I'm doing it. Oh, dang it. <laughs> Are you sure you don't need it? I got it! Okay, sweetie. Mm. I can do this. Uh, oh, see? Very good! The fourth stage of Erickson's theory is industry versus inferiority. This stage focuses on children between the ages of 5 and 12 years old. Children at this age are becoming more aware of themselves as individuals. They work hard at being responsible, being good, and doing things right. Children grasp the concepts of space and time management in more logical, practical ways. At this stage, children are eager to learn and accomplish more complex skills, such as reading, writing, or telling time. They also get to form moral values, recognizing cultural and individual differences. At this stage, if ignored, Children might express their independence by talking back and being disobedient and rebellious. Erickson viewed the elementary school years as critical for the development of self-confidence. If children are encouraged to make and do things, followed by praise for their accomplishments, they begin to demonstrate industry by being diligent and putting work before pleasure. If children are instead ridiculed or punished for their efforts, or if they find they are incapable of meeting their teachers and parents' expectations, they develop feelings of inferiority about their capabilities. If not allowed to discover their own talents in their own time, they will develop a sense of lack of motivation and low self-esteem. Are you excited for school? Yeah, I'm so excited to meet some friends and stuff. Oh, I'm so excited for you. I can't believe it's already here. Have a good day at school. I will. I think I see some people in there. Bye. Bye, Bye I'll Mom. I'll see you later. Bye. Oh, Hey, Mom, class is Hi. done. Yeah. And I met some new friends. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's so exciting. You learned what a dinosaur was. Yeah, it was Wasn't really that sweet? It was awesome. Yeah. That was so cool. And I got an A on my math test. Already on the first day. On that's the first so day. exciting. Good Yay. job. Thanks. Vocab 3 Psychosocial Moratorium. 
This is when a person takes a break from real life to actively search for their identity. The fifth stage of Erickson's theory is identity versus role confusion. This stage focuses on adolescent development. The adolescent is newly concerned with how they appear to others. One obstacle of this stage is sexual identity. Some adolescents experience some role confusion with this, having mixed ideas and feelings about how to fit into society. Eventually, most adolescents achieve a sense of identity regarding who they are and where their lives are headed. Another obstacle adolescents face is the identity crisis. This turning point in human development seems to be the reconciliation between the person one has come to be and the person society expects one to become. This emerging sense of self will be established by forging past experiences with anticipations of the future. During this period of time, society gives adolescents time to find themselves, something we like to call the psychosocial moratorium. According to Erickson, when an adolescent has balanced both perspectives of what have I got and what am I going to do with it, he or she has established their identity. So do you guys want to go shopping after school? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Like, where do you want to go? I mean, what stores are around here? I mean, there's a mall like right down the street. You just go there. Yeah, that's Hi, that sounds um, nice. my name is Jeff, and I'm new here, and I was wondering if I could sit at your guys' table with you and eat, because I'm all alone by myself. Um, sure. sure. Yeah, sure. Cool. We're going shopping after yeah. school. Sweet. So. Can I cut my, like, dresses and stuff like that? <laughs> Tom, he's like, <laughs> <laughs>